Raw Mass Challenge number 9. For more information, you should watch the beginning of Challenge number 1. The basics are you're not allowed any calculating devices or measuring implements, such as rulers and protractors. All you should need is a pencil and a piece of paper. Pause the video now and have a go at these warm-up questions. Okay, let's get started with the junior warm-up. In the following, if the following fractions are arranged in increasing order of size, which one's in the middle? Now we could make these all out of 630. If we did 2 times 5 times 7 times 9, that would give us 630. And we could then multiply them up to find out what the equivalent fractions are. Slightly more, in uh, slightly cleverer way of doing it would be to think about that these are all fairly close to a half. So if we just figure out how far away from a half they are, if I just make these out of nice even fractions, so we convert these into um, equivalent fractions that are have a, a denominator that's twice as big, and we can see that this one is one sixth away from a half, this one is one tenth away from a half, this one is one fourteenth away from a half and this one is one eighteenth away from a half. So if we arrange them in increasing order of size, which one would be in the middle? Well they're all bigger than a half, but this is this is a half, so that's going to be the first. Then this one is the next closest one to a half. That's actually not a circle, let's underline it. I'm going to circle the answer. Um, and then we work back then the next one closest to a half, because this is one fourteenth is slightly bigger than 1 18th and that's how much bigger than a half that is so that's slightly bigger again so that would be the third one, that would be the fourth one, that would be the fifth one so that's first, first, second, third so this is our middle one, D OK, the intermediate warm-up what fraction is halfway between 1 quarter and 1 sixth? so we really need to think about equivalent fractions we could change it into twelfths a quarter in twelfths would be three twelfths because you times the top and bottom by three. One sixth into twelfths would be two twelfths. Um, but you can't really find a fraction in between those. So we need to go up another notch. So we just take it up to twenty-four. So we take them out of twenty-four, twenty-fourths. So four into twenty-four would be six. So that'd be six twenty-fourths. And a six into twenty-four is four. So that's four twenty-fourths. And that's much better because we can then say halfway between those is 5 24ths, which is C. Okay, the senior warm up, um, possibly the easier of all three questions. If we realise we can just add the top to get 9009, all over 9, and then we divide 9009 by 9, 9 goes to 9 once, 0, 0, 0, and 9 goes to 9 once, so it's 1001. Actually, if you know what you're doing, that's a very straightforward question. Although it was on a senior math challenge paper. Junior Trixie from Raw Math Challenge number 8. If you haven't had a go at this question yet, pause the video and give it a try now. OK, Pinocchio's nose is 5 centimetres long. Each time he tells a lie, his nose doubles in length. After he has told 9 lies, his nose will be roughly the same length as A. So we start with 5 centimetres, and after the first lie, he's going to double 5, which is going to be 10 centimetres. Then double it again, 20, then 40, then 80, then 160, then 320. So that's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. The seventh one's going to be 640. The eighth one's going to be 1,280. And the ninth one, and we double that, which is going to be 2,560 centimetres. So that's approximately what is to 25.6 metres. So which of these is about 25.6 metres? Well, a domino is obviously in centimetres. Tennis racket, maybe a metre, not in that. Snooker table, that's a standard snooker table is 12 feet long, so not. 25 metres. A football pitch is about 100 metres, so that leaves us with the tennis court, D. Intermediate Trixie from Raw Mass Challenge number 8. If you haven't had a go at this question yet, pause the video and give it a try now. 
Okay, in this question, there's quite a bit of information here. One of the following is the largest of nine consecutive positive integers, whole numbers, whose sum is a perfect square. Which one is it? Well, with this sort of question, I'd quite like to just have a little think about the numbers. So if we just start with the first one and write down some numbers. So this is the, the largest of nine consecutive numbers. So here are the consecutive numbers. So we've got the numbers from 110 up to 118. There's nine numbers there. Okay, if we added all those up, um, we get 990 plus the numbers from 1 to 8. So we've got 990 plus the numbers from 1 to 8. Um, if you think about it, 1 plus 8 is 9, 2 plus 7 is 9, 3 plus 6 is 9, 4 plus 5 is 9. So that's four nines, which is 36. And we add those together, we get 1026. Okay, is that a perfect square? Hmm, difficult to tell really. We could, we could find the divisors and stuff and, and work from there, but we need to be a bit smarter. So, if we think back to what we've got here, these nine numbers, is there a quicker way of adding them up? Well, if we think about this middle number, 114, and then think about the numbers either side so that they pair. So if I take one off, sorry, if I take one off the 115 and add it to the 113, I get 214. So if I take the 116 and add it onto the 112, two off the 116, add it onto the 112, again I get two 114s. And similarly here. Now this is because 114 is the mean average of these numbers. So to add up all these numbers would be the same as doing 114 times 9. Now we happen to know that this is 1026, but we also know that it's 114 times 9, and if we want it to be a square number, then if 9, which is already a square number, this needs to be a square number as well for the whole thing to be a square number. And 14, 114 is not a square number. Um, you've got 100 is 10 squared, 121 is 11 squared, 144 is 12 squared, so it's not one of those. So what we're trying to do here is to look for a number that gives us that. So let's have a look at the next one, 128 and count down from there, 127, 126, well we should know because of these are similar ending to, to that one that the middle number is going to be 124 and uh, that's going to be times by 9 to get the answer, not really interested in the answer this is a square number, this needs to be a square number for the whole thing to be a square number but it's not, 121 is the nearest square number to that next one, well I could do the same thing again, I'm going to get 134 times 9 134 is not a square number but in the next one, we're going to get 144 times 9. And it just so happens that 144 is 12 squared times by 3 squared. So this, whatever it is, is going to be a square number something squared. In fact, it's going to be 36 squared. So 148 would be our answer. Senior Trixie from Raw Math Challenge number 8. If you haven't had a go at this question yet, pause the video and give it a try now. Okay, so we have to try to see how many of these statements would be true at any one time. Um, let's just see if we can make all five statements true. So A is going to be less than B, A is less than 0, B is less than 0. So we just try some negative numbers where A is less than B. So minus 2, minus 1. That would be true because minus 2 is less than minus 1. Minus 2 squared is 4. Minus 1 squared is 1. That would be true. Is this one true? So we'd have minus 1 over minus a half. Is that less than 1 over minus 1? Well, that's minus a half. Is that less than minus 1? Well, no, it's not because minus 1 is a smaller number than that. So that's not true. Okay, so that doesn't work for that. Um, but certainly we can have four statements true. Um, so, so we could try it with uh, a's, um, a's not less than B, but that wouldn't give us any more statements true than we've already got. We've already got four statements true. So really, D is your answer. And finally, some new tricksy questions to keep you busy until next time. Please feel free to post your thoughts on the solutions to these questions in the comments section on YouTube. 
If you have found this video interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to check your answers, subscribe to Raw Maths on YouTube so you can find out when I post the next video which will have the solutions to these questions. So until next time, good luck.